always takes these opportunities in the big moments, whether it be preseason at SEC media days, whether it be before bowl play, uh, signing periods to get home and drive home a particular point. Uh, did, did you catch anything in particular that uh, that uh, Coach Saban uh, wanted to, to bring across, whether that be to the media, to his team, to the fans? He said quite a bit today coming off the plane in New Orleans. And, uh, well, first and foremost, he always likes to appreciate uh, the bowl committee that has extended the opportunity, of course, in this case, of the All-State Sugar Bowl Committee. So thanking those guys for the opportunity to be in this endeavor. Uh, a lot of people, the question what the question being, uh, does Alabama deserve it? You know, Ohio State had a couple of more wins on the resume. Of course, the Buckeyes winning the conference championship despite the two losses. You know, does it, did Alabama really truly deserve it? Uh, Nick Saban talked about how much he is appreciative of the Sugar Bowl committee for the opportunity. But the main thing that really hit home to me was when he discussed how this team has evolved from enjoying the bowl atmosphere to just wanting to win the game. Uh, I go back to the college football playoff started in 2012, 2014, excuse me. And I remember that season, Alabama took on Ohio State. You know, guys were enamored to uh, be on Bourbon Street, enjoy the fun, enjoy the festivities, you know, really get lost in the chaos that is New Orleans, probably not as focused on the game as they should have been. And you end up losing the game to Ohio State. And though you had fun during the uh, or doing the external things, the most the thing you remember the most is not winning that football game. And Nick Saban talked about how his guys have, have evolved to being able to uh, understand that winning this game or winning the game that you're in is the reason why you're you're inside the position you're in. Yes, you enjoy the external factors. You you go out there, you have fun, you you goof around, you log a gag you log a gag around. But the most important thing you take from this experience is did you win the game or not? And uh, with a lot of these players on the leadership council, when you talk to Ron Payne. Deshaun Hand, uh, Jalen Hurts, Calvin Ridley, Bo Scarborough, Damian Harris, Bradley Bozeman, the amount of players on the leadership council that sa that Saban extends uh, the golden scepter to in terms of making sure guys meet curfew time, making sure guys are in film study, you know, having players 100% prepared. They're here to try to win a football game, and the ultimate success is understanding you're here to win this game. You're here to put to put in your best effort. And uh, with this being the most important thing that you're going to remember, you want to remember it off a positive note. And I think that's the biggest thing Nick Saban wanted to drive home was with the playoff in place and having those positive and negative consequences, you want to make sure that the most reason why you're here is the reason you focus on and that's playing in the game and ultimately trying to win it. We know that uh, the team that lost the Sugar Bowl the year before uh, the matchup that you mentioned against Ohio State, the team that played Oklahoma and lost as a big favorite against the Sooners, uh, A.J. McCarron's final season at Alabama, and then, of course, uh, Blake Sims in place at quarterback after a, a prolific season statistically in leading Alabama to the SEC championship. And, and so uh, I know that that was stated about the 2013 team, that it wasn't necessarily – uh, driven near the end of the season, wasn't necessarily um, having the the benefit of the type of leadership that Alabama teams are used to. Are you pretty much making the same statement uh, or at least uh, interpreting that based on what Nick Saban had to say at the podium about the 2014 team as well? In a sense. I mean, I, I go back to the, to the 2013 team for just a moment. You had a couple of leaders on that team, Mark, but you also had leaders that were about themselves and not really totally into team. Because I remember after that game was over, you had a lot of players throwing the program under the bus, throwing Nick Saban under the bus, saying some things that they probably should not have said. And in the 2014 team, you had leadership, but you had a lot of young guys and a lot of young guys. And let's be honest, Mark, these are 18, 19, 20-year-old guys. They want to have fun. 
and you go out to a place like New Orleans where a lot of fun is being presented to you, you're not going to have as much focus on the game as much, or you're not, you're not going to have the same amount of focus on the game that you would have the fun that you can have in New Orleans. There are concerts, there are parties, there are, you know, amusement parks, there are places to go, people to see, you know, things to do to occupy your time. And when you have a lot of young players on that team like Alabama had in 2014, keep in mind that defense had little to nothing in the cupboard in 2014. That was a secondary that wasn't really all a wasn't really all that good. Cyrus Jones was young, still trying to grow into being a defensive back. Eddie Jackson was good, and a lot of people felt like he could have that he could surpass Cyrus Jones. But we remember the story on Eddie Jackson got hurt in the spring of 2014, uh, tore his anterior cruciate ligament in his left knee, if I'm not mistaken, and was rushed back. And you could see the speed, a lot of the acceleration, agility, the burst gone from that knee when him with him trying to play cornerback, arguably the best defensive back on that team in 2014 was Landon Collins. Uh, at the linebacker position, you had recently lost C.J. Mosley to the NFL draft. And despite Trey DePriest being a guy that you thought would take the baton, the baton two steps away from him and smacks Reggie Ragland right in the face. Now, Reggie Ragland was able to grow from that and become the linebacker that Alabama fans thought he would become. But it took a minute. So that 2014 team that had little to nothing in the cover defensively, they <coughs> you have a bunch of young guys. It, it's tough to keep focused on the game at hand where you have a place filled with the distractions that New Orleans has. So in the 2013 team that had the leadership, but probably not the group of guys that were solely focused on team and the 2014 guys that, no offense to them, had a lot of young talent. This is the reason why Saban this time around states that we've grown to appreciate just the game, just getting to the game, playing that game, focused on the game versus the atmosphere itself.